Hello everyone and welcome to the Irish Abroad Show. Uh, Paul Tierney here and I'm joined by regular host Jer Brown as well. Jer, how are you? I know you're watching Shamrock Rovers against Ferenc Farros there. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie, as, as a Pats fan, I'm uh, quite pleasantly pleased to see the scoreline. I know people said, oh, get behind all League of Iron teams. But look, I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff on this channel. I'm going to be brutally honest. I'm not going to lie, I don't want to see Rovers win. They've already got... Six more games in Europe. They've already got passage into the group stages of the Conference League. They're going to end up playing 14 games anyway this season in Europe. They're going to net more money than any other team in Europe this year. It's already a good bit ahead of the league. So, and I support a rival team. So I know Rovers fan might say, well, they're just sour grapes after last week. They're in this jealousy. Don't really care. Obviously, look, I am conscious this game is on TV. There's probably a lot of people watching this game that wouldn't pass much in a bad night into the League of Ireland. And they're probably looking at this like, ah, Typical League of Ireland, you know, rubbish and everything else like that. So, obviously, I am hopeful that they can be competitive and everything else from that sense, but I'm not going to lie, I don't want to see them win all the same. Yeah, that's fair enough. And sure, if any of those people are watching this right now, just watch a couple of their matches from the previous rounds anyway, and you'll see how well they've done a lot of the time anyway, if you are conscious that they are playing a team who were in the group stages of the Champions League last year or the year before. I'm not sure which one. Two years ago, yeah. Members. And Yeah, yeah. Your opening group stage disaster, but... I might. This might sound controversial, but to go back on your point, the two teams were over and knocked out in Europe this year. Like, I think most teams in League of Ireland have beat them two teams. Certainly Hibernian, I know in Malta, they are absolutely rubbish. Well, you've got to give them credit. I mean, for this, this is not, this is not trying to start the pot. This is just me being brutally honest. Okay, I get Sluffy, that was a potential banana skin. They ran Dynamo, sorry, we had very, very close in that qualifying tie. I think only 3 2 after aggregate, 2 2 in the first leg. Dylan Zorgreb are still in the Champions League and with the travel arrangements and everything else like that. But at the end of the day, the North Macedonian League is below us in coefficient. If we really want to be kicking on, we should be beating teams there. I think, and this is not because I have a biased hat uh, on me, I think Pats would have beaten them and certainly in the case of Hibernian, you know, they didn't they didn't achieve anything in winning that game. And I'm not trying to take away from Rovers and anything else like that, but the, the aim for them before a ball was kicking Europe this year should be to make it to group stages of the Conference League. Given the opportunities they have, given they were kind of see that they would be very disappointed how things went last year against Florin Tallinn. Now, look, I would give credit where credit is due. A standalone 90 minute result to beat Luda Goretz at home, a vastly experienced European team, I think was a fantastic achievement. And like, then the day, well, if they could still keep this to 2 0, maybe nick a goal in the second half, you'd still give them a good chance in Tallinn next week because they do have a good pedigree at home in Europe. You go back to three years ago as well, and they knocked out Bran. And I think it was the Apple Limassol, the Cyprus team as well, they bet 2 1 at home. So, like, I'm just, you know, not trying to sound bitter, but I'm just trying to say at the end of the day, um, I, I think Rovers are in a position where you would expect them to be before ball was kicking you off this year. I know Rovers fans might also say they have players injured, but look, this is just my honest opinion. That's fair enough. You're entitled to that. I think we should crack on with the Irish Abroad show anyway. And we'll be, as Jer has I get us in more trouble. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, you won't be getting in trouble, sure. Rovers are the Man United of the League of Ireland, so I mean, well, they're not as bad as them at the minute, obviously, but um, I mean, they're the most successful team. They're not going to be liked by everyone, unfortunately. Um, we'll crack on anyway. Start off with the Premier League. I've only got three bits, so if you want to add to it, you can. Uh, Mark Travers played the full 90 minutes in Bournemouth's 4 0 defeat at Man City, probably expected. Uh, only from what I saw, only one of the goals was. He, he probably felt he could have done better with, to be honest with you. I think it's harsh to even say that. I think it was the third oh, goal. goal. Yeah, one had a deflection on it. And Should have saved that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, that's what Dorset Live said. He got five out of ten from them, and he was criticised yeah. for the body position on the third goal. So, look, listen, he probably should have done better with that. But otherwise, some nice goals scored by City. Probably an expected result. Um, another Irish goalkeeper, Gavin Bazunu, played 90 minutes in Southampton's two-all draw with Leeds. He got 7 out of 10 from Hampshire Live. He sprung into action after 30 minutes with two big saves. Uh, Jer, I only saw the highlights, but uh, a fair recollection, Fair recollection. 7 out seven out of 10 is a good score. Yeah, I don't think he could have really done much about either Rodrigo's goals. Might be a little bit disappointed with the first one. He was kind of beaten at the near post, but I'd be looking at it from an attacking point of view. Rodrigo has to score from there. He's that kind of close. And the second one is just one of those. It's that kind of looping header. He just couldn't quite reach it. I can't actually remember who got the header on. I think Rodrigo then was just rushed in to tap it in to make sure of it. But yeah, he made a couple of um, important saves. He made a good save as well late on um, when the game was at 2-2. Credits to Hanson as well. 
uh, because I actually had leads in my accumulator to win that game. That wasn't the only game that let me down, but it showed me it showed what kind of prediction I expected from that game. And Southampton are a team this season. I think they could get relegated to be to be brutally honest. Obviously, I hope they don't with Gavin's involvement. And for Mark Travers and Bournemouth, yeah, look, it was always going to be um, a difficult afternoon. We still pulled off. I think I can't remember who it was from. Um, we pulled off a very, very good one-on-one save. Yeah, in the I, first think half. It, I think it, I think it was Gundogan. I think it was it Gundogan. Was, yeah. Yeah, now, yeah. Looking back on replays, Gundogan should have squared that for an absolute certain tap in for Haaland. Uh, I think a lot of people, fancy football-wise, would have been fuming. I, I don't do fo- fancy football this season, but I imagine a lot of people triple captain Haaland early on, thinking he got a bag full of goals. Didn't happen like that. I think just the one assist. The second half as well, like I suppose it was just a case of Manchester City. City going through um, the motions and everything else like that. But, um, yeah, just worrying, um, I suppose, again, in general, it was, you know, two goalkeepers or the only Irish players, as far as I can remember, that featured in the Premier League this weekend. We had a lot of unused substitutes, like some Matt Doherty, who was most involved in the weekend, was separating Tuchel and Conte. Um, you know, Seamus Coleman was once again on new sub for Everton. Shane Duffy was on new sub for Fulham. Um, I think back to even the previous week when Conor Commentary came on for limited minutes he didn't come on for West Ham this season I think that's going to be the case uh, I remember it was a couple of years ago Josh Cullen similar situation with Browns injury time sub for West Ham against Liverpool Anfield don't think we've ever seen again in the Premier League I'm not saying Conor Commentary is going to go down that route but I w- would be inclined I don't see him picking up double digits in terms of Premier League appearances this season so yeah it just kind of seems to be a little bit of a continuation from last season where we're talking about limited Irish appearances in the Premier League but I suppose look you could probably count in two hands the amount of players, realistically speaking. Um, I know I wouldn't, you wouldn't even take up all your fingers and thumbs of Irish players that are going to feature heavily in the Premier League this season. Yeah, definitely. Well, there was actually one more. Nathan Collins did play full 90 minutes for Wolves. That's right, yeah. yeah, but they, they got a clean sheet, but Mitrovic did. It was actually a brilliant save from Jose Sa. But uh, yeah, I mean, just on Nathan Collins as well, with Connor Cody moving out, um, he's I, they're really putting the fate into him. I know they paid a lot of money for him, but he's really, really getting the fate put into him now. Yeah, and maybe continued on from the team from earlier. Am I being too pessimistic? I'm a little bit worried for that because I was actually looking forward to the prospect of him and Connor Cody, you know, kind of playing together and he kind of coming under the stewardship of Cody, who's been around a long time, Wolves legend and captain and everything else like that, and just kind of ease him in and take the pressure off. Whereas I'm kind of looking at it, I think they've paid the big money for him. You know, there's a lot of hype, a lot of talk about me, everything else like that. But that was very kind of added pressure. Like, you're going to have to carry the burden for Conor Cody. And Wolves haven't exactly hit the ground running early on this season. Now, they've met a couple of... They've brought in your man, um, the midfielder from Sporting Lisbon, Nunes, his name, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they brought... obviously, like, they've, they've kind of gone a little bit more into the window because they hadn't really done much apart from Collins and their short and attacking options. So that might take a little bit of pressure off him. But look, he showed towards the end of the last season he was well able to handle and cope with the pressure with Burnley. He's... Um, you know, think back to the start of the June in international window when Ireland were struggling away to Armenia and home against Ukraine. He was probably the one shining life in the two games. So he's, he's a young lad who's shown he can cope and handle with the pressure. And I hope it's a case of that is the case where it doesn't maybe get a little bit too much that Conor Cody has, has moved on. But I think that's only a loan move as well to Everton, if I'm correct. Yeah, it is only a loan move. But I think, I, I mean, like he is coming to that age where you're kind of. You know, I, I, it looks like Bruno Lage is trying to change things anyway. Not hugely, but I think, like, with Collins coming in, like, they want him to be the main man, you know. And it's not Willie Bolly and Connor Cody and who else played uh, Ron. So he's, it's not the three of them in the back yeah. three anymore, like with uh, Nuno. It was a bit last year. I know bolly has been out for ages, but Saiz and Cody were still well involved. So, look, they're just trying to change things. And, look, we'll see how it goes. And I'm happy for Collins as well. But they were lucky to escape with a point on Saturday as well. Probably didn't expect Mitrovic to miss the penalty. But, look, good result and another clean sheet for Nathan. Um, yeah, I you know it's it's early days. We talk about the title race. You know, it's kind of half. City one hand, the trophy was, you know, a four-point gap. But, again, early days. But you look back and you think so, Fulham probably going to struggle this season. Was that a bit of a missed opportunity for them to get... Um, all three points. Just one last thing as well. We can't not leave the Premier League without talking probably the biggest talking point from the weekend. It was a brilliant game by all accounts between Spurs and, and, and Chelsea. I'd only seen the YouTube highlight clips from it on Sunday evening because I was at the Tullamore show with work on Sunday, but got the tail end of it on off the ball. It sounded like an absolute cracker, but the handshake at the end 
from my GA kind of interesting background, it, it took me back to summer and Brian Cody and Henry Sheffield. But whatever about the talking point that this one was a proper, proper bust up and everything else like that, and already makes me excited and hope that these two teams draw each other in the League Cup, the FA Cup, Champions League knockout stages, and the return meeting in the Premier League this season because they just want to see more box office stuff like that. And I love Jamie Carragher saying, like, oh, you don't want to see stuff like this. Yes, you do, because it just makes for brilliant, brilliant team. And it's great to see that passion that um, as well for both sides and, and a bit of a rivalry, a bit of a nastiness as well in the game. Yeah, definitely. Well, you think of Antonio Conte, the chap's an absolute nutter, brilliant manager, yeah. but he's he, he's just he's just deranged at times. Like maybe not on on uh, Sunday, but like we've seen him do things. You think of your twenty sixteen with Italy, he was on top of the bloody bench. So I mean, you know, it's just another Tuchel. I mean, he just got fired up. He's usually quite cons- uh, con- like conservative, really, from what I've seen. But yeah, it was fantastic, fantastic match. What a goal by Koulibaly as well. Which has just been, just been glossed over for boy. What happened after it? Um, yeah, I, I mean, in general, Chelsea should have really won. Spurs were awful. Like they really were awful. They got away with it. Like, like I'm not saying they like they're awful because I don't like them. Like they would be disappointed with their performance. Chelsea dominated them, and they just got two goals out of nothing. And that's it. It's a good point for them in the end, really. Though, but uh, yeah, fantastic. They probably will play each other again because they usually do play in the Cups as well. But, uh, yeah, definitely fantastic. And uh, hopefully it keeps coming this week. Leeds playing Chelsea. Bit of a niggle there, as we all know. Mm-hmm. Bit of a niggle with everyone with Leeds, really, to be honest. And uh, who else? Uh, it's just United and Liverpool on Monday night. I mean, I know it's not the game it used to be, but United are in such a state and Liverpool haven't had a good start. It'll be interesting. So, look, fantastic stuff. Yeah, it's a massive relegation, six pointer to be brutally honest. Ah, relegation. We stopped the lights. Your modesty. Sure, the pitch might be too dry. That's why he's a play bad again. Anyway, look, uh, on to the championship. Will I do the weekend and you do the midweek because you have all the yeah. midweek? Yeah, yeah fair, fair enough. Perfect. Grand. So on Friday evening, we had Watford against Burnley, the two relegate, two of the two of the relegated teams from last season. And uh, Irish involvement all around here for the Burnley side. Derek Costello, he was given 5 out of 10 by Lang Slive. Luke McNally, he didn't get a rating because he came on too late, but he did have a big chance to equalise late on and unfortunately couldn't take it. Now, I was told about this by my mates. I haven't seen it yet, but he had a big chance. I think it was off a corner, fell to him and he fluffed it. And uh, Josh Cullen got 6 out of 10 from Lang Slive. So that's good going for them. Unfortunately, they got a defeat. Bit of a change there at Burnley as well. A lot of outgoings, a lot of incomings. So, uh Look, they haven't started too badly anyway. Uh, another Callum O'Dowd assist this season as Cardiff beat Birmingham City 1-0. Scott Hogan did play 90 minutes in that also. Uh, Michael Obafemi got an assist as Swansea beat Blackpool 1-0. Ryan Manning got a clean sheet and CJ Hamilton was on as a sub for the Tangerines. Will Smallbone played 90 minutes as Stoke lost 3-1 to Huddersfield. They'd be disappointed with that result. Actually, Huddersfield looked like they're destined for a struggling season. Uh, and Great to see this again and during the week. Andrew Mbamadele, 90 minutes and a yellow card. Norwich are beaten on the weekend by Hull, but it's great to see him back in and playing week in, week out. Yeah, he's, um, he's I think, he's just racked up 90 minutes in every game so far this season. Talk about like teams struggling. Um, like Burnley have made an inconsistent start since they came back down. Norwich really, really struggling. I know they eventually got the win there at the uh, midweek, I think, over Huddersfield, wasn't it? But, um, you know, for a team that I think a lot of people expected to hit the ground running straight away but at least from a Irish perspective Adam Eda getting over not Adam Eda, sorry Andrew Owen Bamdelli getting over his injury setbacks from the end of last season and Adam Eda inching closer and closer as well to return hopefully we should see him over the course of the next two to three weeks as well because um, I think that was the time frame that he was expected to be back and it'd be great to see him and you know he seems to be just about finding his feet in the Premier League as well got a goal got a couple of assists just before that injury came, got a set run of teams. You're hoping now that if he can't stay injury free, get back up to match fitness so he can take off in the championship this season. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully. Uh, we can continue on with the rest of it and then we'll have a chat at the end. There's only a couple more things to talk about. Uh, Robbie Brady grabbing the assist. He's done very well for Preston so far. He played 79 minutes as they beat Luton Town 1-0 at Kenilworth Road. Alan Brown and Troy Powder are also involved in that for the away side. Dan McNamara played 90 minutes and got a yellow card as Millwall came from 2-0 down to beat Coventry City 3-2 at the Den. 
Uh, Chiodosio Benny made the three goals in three games as Rotherham hopped off Reading 4 0. They were 4 0 up at half time in that. Uh, Shane Long and Jeff Hendrick playing for the Royals there. Uh, Jimmy Dunn got 90 minutes in, in QPR's two all draw away at Sunderland, where the goalkeeper scored the last minute equaliser. Reminiscing about Allison from last uh, from a couple of seasons gone, sure you were Jer when you saw that one. Very, very dramatic. Um Will Keane grabbed a goal and played 90 minutes in Wigan's 1-1 draw with Bristol City, James McLean and Mark Sykes involved in that also. Dara Lenehan got an assist, that's a surprising one, and played 90 minutes as Middlesbrough and Sheffield United drew 2-2. John Egan playing 90 minutes in that also. And in Blackburn and West Brom, 2-1 win for the home side. Sammy Schmodix, Jason Malumbi and Dara O'Shea all involved for either side there. So, Jer. Uh, Chiodosi Ogbeni, we know his ability. Three goals in three games there. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, he's hit the ground running uh, this season, which is brilliant to see. He's kind of obviously had a great season in League One last year. I think he was, he was involved in Rotherham the last time they were in the Championship. We had an injury hit kind of season. And it's great to see that he's kind of taken to the step up in divisions and grades, like a duck to water, and he's really kind of hit the ground running. And Rotherham as well, doing kind of quite well. They seem to be a bit like a Wickham and a Peterborough. They all seem to be kind of that bit too good for League One, but they can never really establish themselves and stay up in the Championship. So hopefully that trend can kind of change this season from their point of view as well. It's also good as well to see Georgie Kelly um, being brought off the bench in every game and getting good, reasonable game time, man and match in the League Cup last week. Because even though I know he scored in the end of last season, you're a bit kind of worried. You're thinking, right, you know, he's, going, he's realistically speaking, take away that one appearance. He's stepping straight up from the League of Ireland to the Championship. It's a massive, massive step up. But bit by bit, he seems to be doing okay. And if he can hopefully maybe now make a real impact when he comes off the bench once or twice, he can grow faith and confidence in the manager and be given more game time as well. Yeah, definitely completely agree. Um, do you have anything else to add there from the weekend? Because I've, I've got everything there. Uh, no, that's pretty much it, I think, yeah. Uh, just that Callum Robinson also came off the bench in that game for West Brom when they lost 2-1 to Blackburn. Grand, perfect. Uh, so, do you? What way do you want to do this? Do you want to do the midweek in the championship now, and we'll just do it that way, like say League One weekend, League One midweek together. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. Trend, it's trend we did last season, so we'll stick with it yeah. for this season. Don't break, don't break, don't break it. They've ain't broken. Uh, so yeah. midweek, uh, Ryan Manning and Michael Obafemi both got their maiden goals this season in Swansea City two two twelve in Millwall. A crazy game this one was. I actually uh, apologies to any Swansea fans, but. It's hard not laugh when you're seeing how this game ended. They were 2 0 up going into time before conceding two late own goals. And it's, I've seen something as well on social media. It's kind of like that situation on FIFA where a child, you're losing a game and you just refuse to accept defeat and you switch what team you're playing for and you score two own goals to take something from it. Just the most bizarre thing ever. Like, so it must be obviously we're here kind of having a laugh, but like if you're a Swansea City fan 48 hours later, I say you still haven't physically or mentally recovered from how annoying that must have been. Uh, Dan McNamara also started this game for the London-based side. Robbie Brady, we talked about there. He's had a really good start of the season with Preston. He backed up that assist at the weekend with a man and match performance midweek in their nil-nil draw. Rodham. It's just the most encouraging thing to see is the lengthy long minutes that he's he's getting. It must be the most consistent runners of games he's got now in a good to two or three years, which is brilliant to see. I still at 30 years of age. I still think if he can stay this consistent fit. He is definitely someone who has to be on Stephen Kenny's radar, I think, given that we're not exactly spoiled for players playing outstanding football in the Premier League or anything like that. Um, as per usual, Alan Brown and Troy Parrott both started this game for Preston. Uh, Chinozzi and Benny also started for Rotherham, while Georgie Kelly was introduced in the second half. We touched on earlier as well, Andrew Omar Van Dele and Norwich got their first win of the season in a 2-1 win over Huddersfield at the weekend. I think they're on the Sky Live game tomorrow night. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head who they're playing, but if you're... I was going to say you're at nothing else, but if you're not at any of the League of Ireland games, you're at nothing else. Uh, make sure to check it out or you know, just record it and watch it back after coming back from a League of Ireland match. Uh, Mark Sykes was sent off in the second half, but it was still a good night for Bristol Row, Bristol City even, as they bet Luton 2 0 at home. Scott Hogan played 84 minutes in Birmingham City's 1 1 draw with Watford. Jimmy Dunn played 90 minutes. Sinclair Armstrong played 23 minutes, and Shadipo played 11 minutes. Uh, in QPR's 1-0 loss uh, at home to Blackpool. So obviously they couldn't carry the momentum from that dramatic late draw against Sunderland into that game. Will Smallbone and Gavin Kilkenny from Stoke City and Daryl Lennon in Middlesbrough were all part of their respective sides 2-2 draw on Tuesday night. Uh, or actually, sorry, that was even last night, I should say. 
Uh, Dar O'Shea was sole Irish starter for West Brom in their 0 0 draw with Coventry City. Jace Malumby and Callum Robinson were both introduced off the bench this game for the Baggies. And Callum O'Dowda uh, also was sprung from the bench in this game for the Bluebirds. Interesting to see he didn't actually start that game given his encouraging start of the season. But again, it's tough going with these games, midweek games, maybe. Uh, squad rotation and just kind of looking after players. Early stage as well, still trying to find fitness levels, I suppose, also. Uh, just two more bits of information. Jeff Hendrick and Shane Long were both part of the Reading team that uh, upset league leaders 3-0, uh, upset league leaders Blackburn Rovers 3-0 the whole mass was surprised, not just because we mentioned Blackburn are league leaders, but Reading haven't exactly had the most encouraging start of the season, in particular the fact they came into that game at the back of a 4-0 defeat against Rotherham. So, it's kind of a case of what Reading's going to show up each day. Sammy Smollock started that game for Blackburn Rovers as well. And John Egan's Sheffield United overcame Sunderland 2-1 last night at Bramwell Lane. He was the sole Irish representative in that game. Kieran Clark now also joining uh, Enda Stevens on the treatment table. Uh, no surprise there with Kieran Clark or Enda Stevens being uh, on the treatment table. I'm not being harsh, but they are generally, particularly Clark, are usually injured. Which We're is, not really holding back on the shorts today, are we? No, 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 no. Uh, Stevens, especially the last while, he's had he's had a rotten run with injuries since they got relegated, really. Maybe even the last season when they were up. But look, yeah. hopefully we can get them sorted anyway. It kind of goes back to my point, so I think that's why there's a vacancy there for Robbie Brady, particularly left wing back, because I don't think Ender Stevens is over. I think most Ireland fans agree. I don't think he's overly carried his Sheffield United form into a green shirt. And Brady, you know, he's a little bit more proven. Some might say, and fair enough, I wouldn't totally disagree. He hasn't really done it for Ireland since that goal in 2016 against Italy. Fair enough. But I still think, you know, you still know there's something in him. There's a footballer in him. Like, not saying there isn't in Andy Stevens, but I think you always would have had Robbie Brady probably as a higher, greatest prospect from an Irish perspective than Andy Stevens. And, and also the fact as well, I know the September international break is later. It's still goes to four weeks away. But Andy Stevens, you know, he's injured at the moment. Could take a while to get match fitness back, even if he is back in the fold next couple of weeks. But Robbie Brady is flying it, and like I say, if he keeps that up, I think he'll definitely be in the Ireland squad whenever Stephen Kenny names that squad in the next couple of weeks. Completely agree. And his compatriots, Alan Brown and Troy Parrott, as well, definitely be involved. Also, and um, we can move on to League One now. Anyway, I've got uh, I've, I haven't gone through the whole thing, I've got a couple of things from the weekend goals and stuff. So, will I do the weekend? You do midweek again, maybe? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Grand. So a start on Saturday afternoon. Portsmouth 2 0 winners against Cheltenham Town. Sean Raggett, Joe Rafferty, and Ronan Curtis all involved there. Had a good start this season. Portsmouth, can they finally break that hoodoo of not getting up in the last few years? Unfortunately, an own goal for Conor McCarthy is Derby as uh, Barnsley lost 2 1 away at Pride Park. Jason Knight, Aaron Cashin, Conor Horhan, James Collins, and Luca Connell both also playing for boats. All also playing for both sides. Um, Marcus Harness got another goal. He's had a fantastic start to the season for Ipswich, as well as Ipswich having a great start to the season as they as they uh, easily beat MK Dons 3-0. Warren O'Hara, Connor Grant and Dara Burns all playing for the away side there as well. Tough start for MK Dons after just missing out on automatic last year. And Keane Hayes grabbing an assist for Fleetwood Town as they drew 1-1 with Markham. I'm not sure if Thomas I'm a share got involved was involved in that game because I couldn't get any updates on live scores. So that's all I have from League One on the weekend. You went to add Jay? Yeah, he actually did come on in that game as well and he also came on midweek for them um as well. I would recommend if you're struggling for get updates from live score, uh recommend using Flash score. That's what I use for my source and I find it brilliant. Just for a moment here, oh I thought Rovers might be getting the penalty but the referee has waved it away. But not only have they not got a penalty, I should also add as well, um, they're now 3-0 down. They've conceded in the first five minutes, second half. Didn't really fully see the goal because I was just flicking back from my notes back over to the RT player. But I, well, from what I could see, it was an initial shot. Alan Mann has parried it. And unfortunately, from a Rovers point of view, a fair and Farrell's player was the first person to get the rebound and took the net. 3-0, Paul. I know, obviously, don't want to talk about it too much because I want to get on with the show. But quickly, at 3-0, you kind of feel like unless they can score in the next 40 minutes, that's probably going to be a step too far for the return leg in Tyler next week. They either have to keep it at 3-0 now or get a goal. And if they keep it at 3-0, get an early goal in Tala. If they score tonight, make it 3-1, still need to get an early goal in Tala. It's yeah. all gone back to that now. But um, yeah, look, unfortunate. But look, they've got that 3.3 million coming in from qualification for the conference league. I think they they have a good chance of getting a couple of points in some of the games because they're 
Like, you're not pay- playing against the best of the best. Like, you could be playing against wow. the likes of Lincoln Red Imps, who did get into it last year, not this year. I know that. So, look, I mean, there's opportunities there for more more results. And we saw Dundalk do it a few years ago in the Europa League. So, Rovers can definitely do it in the Conference League. Yeah, I think as well as the kind of, well, our people respect it. Tonight was probably going to be a bit of a step up, similar to Luda Bretz. Like, Fair and Paris have got pretty good recent European pedigree. And I think from their point of view, if they didn't win, like their ambition, let's be honest, probably to start this campaign when they went to Europe was probably to get to the group stage of the Champions League. The Europa League was probably a minimum requirement for them, so it would be a major failure for them if they didn't get this far. But again, it kind of gives us a little indication like that while things are improving, we still know that this is a level we can get to. Like the likes of the Hungarian leagues are the leagues that we want to be at least kind of matching and getting close up to on the coefficient. But anyway, before yeah. we rumble on, maybe that should be something that should be set, kept for the League of Ireland show. I'll just go through the little bits of information I have from League One midweek. I don't usually go into in-depth um, on League One as much as yourself. I just kind of get whoever um, does what. So if you feel like adding anything else to it afterwards, feel free, Paul. So just the four yeah. bits of information I have from midweek are a week after scoring in the League Cup, Ronan Curtis got off the mark in the league for his maiden goal of the season in Portsmouth's 4 win win over Cambridge United. Jack Taylor was also on the target for also on target in Peterborough's 2-0 win at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Anthony Scully was a busy man as he got an, an assist and a goal in Lincoln City's 2-1 win over Oxford. Of course, we mentioned as well, Lincoln being managed by former Republic of Ireland international Mark Kennedy. And you touched on there, he's on fire more than the weather last week. Marcus Harness made a back-to-back games where he scored as Ipswich uh, continued their fantastic start the season beating uh, Burton 1-0. Massive club of Ipswich, I think it's 2019 season 2018-2019 season was the relegation championship. This makes it a fourth season in League One. We've seen with Sunderland, it took them four attempts. Let's hope it's the case as well, four time lucky for Ipswich, because they're too big of a club to be down there. And like you know, when we see the likes of Leeds and Nottingham Forest recently returned to Premier League, Ipswich are a club as well that have aspirations of doing that surely inside the next decade. Yeah, definitely a club who's won the UA for Cup in the past as well, something yeah. which the likes of Arsenal haven't done either. So, I mean, that's got to be said. Don't like criticizing the team I support, but look, it's facts. It's like Aston Villa, it's like Nottingham Forest. You win a European trophy, you win a European trophy. That's it. Um, Arsenal did win a European trophy. Uh, they might have won the Cup Winners' Cup or something, but I it's mean, like, yeah, I know, but I know, but uh, you know, you know, it gets it gets said to me all the time. I won't get into it anyway. I won't get into it. I get emotional. Um, <laughs> in terms of League Two. It's become even more bare this year. I couldn't find yeah. anything in the last two game weeks, and I'm sure it's the same with yourself. Even I, I know Paddy Madden's playing. We got him the first week, but nothing, nothing since then. I don't think. Do you, Benton? I got one. Yeah, similar. Like to be honest with League Two, the way I look is not taken away from any Irish players down there, but I don't expect it to leak. That Stephen Kenny's going to be calling upon players, so I don't really look to see who's played what or how they kind of perform. Again, it's just more so to see if anyone had any major contribution in the game. And I just found one. And it was a negative one. Uh, Steve McLaughlin missed a penalty after just two minutes in Mansfield's 1-0 defeat away to Leiden Orient. Um, so that just leaves us then with Scotland and then kind of the rest of Europe and the world. I don't have anything that I didn't quite just fully get around to in time. So I can do Scotland and then you can wrap us up with the, the football from outside of the British Isles. That's perfect. No problem. Yeah. So I'll start with the SPFL. Uh, Charlie Dunn and Joe Shocksey both started for St. Mirren as they claimed their first win of the season the third time of asking 1-0 home to Ross County. Graham Carey was part of the St. Johnson team trash 4-0 by Rangers. Uh, Jake Doyle Hayes played the final nine minutes of Hibbs' 2-1 defeat away to Livingston. Johnny Hayes scored while Liam Scales got an assist for Aberdeen but they were still on the wrong side of a five-goal thriller versus Motherwell losing 3-2 at home. And again, just to back up, you know, Motherwell have now won two of the first three games this season. So, again, makes Sligo Rovers' achievement all the more impressive in knocking them out. Motherwell fans will probably point to amazing what a change a manager can do because I think they actually weren't even happy with Graham Alexander before that Sligo Rovers game and that maybe he should have went to the end of last season. So, uh, maybe it was a case of he did overstay his welcome there. Uh, Ross Tierney came off the bench in that game for Motherwell. Alan Power, Captain Kilmarnock on a day to forget versus Celtic as they were trash 5 nil at home. And finally, then from the Scottish Premiership, it's been an awful couple of days for Jamie McGrath and Dundee United. They carried a 1 0 lead going into the second leg last week uh, in the Europa Conference League tie against Ace at Alkmaar. They were trashed 7 0 in Hodmans last week 
and they had another chasing experience in the league on Sunday, this time losing 4-1 at home to Hearts. So seven goals, 11 goals conceded, two defeats in the space of four days. A lot of soul-searching there for Dundee. Yeah, and United, that was just an utterly embarrassing result um, last week. And it makes a question. No more than that time a couple of years ago when Liverpool lost 2-1 to Besiktas in the Champions League group stage. It was, it was a head-to-head game. So the return game at Anfield was two weeks there. Liverpool won 8-0. And everyone was just saying, says, how did Liverpool lose this team in the first place? And I'm sure he said, Alkmaar, not to the care, because they're true. We're probably thinking the same thing. And then there's two bits of information from Scottish Championship. Uh, Aaron Doran, who regularly uh, gets mentioned from that league on the show last season, he scored the second of four goals for Inverness in their 4-1 win over Cove Rangers. And friends of the show, Daryl O'Connor, who you may remember, it was actually our first interviewed guest way back at the start of last season. He got an assist in Ayers 2-2 draw at home to Hamilton. Anything there that I called out to you uh, that stands out from, from Scotland, I suppose it's, it's hard not to, just in a general point of view, throw a mark on and another woeful night for Scottish teams in Europe when they were trashed, Dundee were trashed 7-0 uh, against Ace and Alkmaar. Although I did watch the Rangers PSV game the night yeah. half, so it was actually a very, very enjoyable, very, very even contest. Uh, I do believe whoever wins that game, I think will go on to struggle in the Champions League group stage. As much as it was a good game, I think they're not quite at that level. But I do think whoever misses out in that could actually go on to have a really good say in the Europa League again this season. The like PSV are a very, very funny team. They were in the Champions League group stage or qualifiers last year. They battered Benfica in the second leg of the playoff. I remember watching it, but somehow lost. Benfica mm. was seen go on to reach the quarterfinals, get Liverpool a little bit of a headache, knocked out Ajax. But PSV then suddenly they find themselves in the Conference League and actually got beaten by Leicester in the quarterfinals. So they kind of had a, a funny, funny European campaign last season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, odd odd teams at times in Holland and Portugal comparing them anyway. Um, yeah, I think with Rangers, I mean, if they go into the Europa League again, they'd be looking to at least match getting to the semi-finals, maybe the yeah. final. They were a couple of, they were peno away from winning it last year, if you think about it. I saw Frankfurt live last season. I mean... I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shouting from the rooftops about them anyway from last season anyway I don't know where they found the form but they just really put a lot into the Europa League and look they won on penals listen anyone can win it's 50-50 basically um, just a couple more things from Scotland the lower divisions anyway Daniel O'Reilly got a goal former Shells man centre half for Hamilton they they drew 2-2 against Ayr as well oh, I, missed, I missed that one that game of the year apologies I, 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 the only reason I look at Hamilton is because of him and uh, Connor Salmon Got a goal, but Allo are beaten 4-2 by FC Edinburgh. So, Connor Salmon's still going. I remember watching him down the old Belfield Park playing for you. Is that League 1 or League 2 in Scotland? I think it's League 1. All right. League 1, yeah. Um. Anyway, we can go on into Europe now. A lot to talk about here. A lot of interesting debuts as well. A lot of people would have seen the pictures of this. Festi Ebesele playing for Udinese now, as we know. Got his debut at nowhere better than the San Siro against AC Milan. Came on for seven minutes. As unfortunately, they were beaten 4-2 by the champions there. What a debut for Festi. What a place to make your debut as well. Yeah, great start. And great to see both himself and James Abankar named on the bench. And for him to kind of come on was, is really, really encouraging as well. Um, obviously, disappointing for James that he didn't get come on. But look, it's a long season ahead. But uh, yeah, dream place um, to go and make your debut just there as... Just to break away, sorry, for a second. Fair and Farrell should have actually made a 4-0. They missed an absolute... Sitter. and even just before that uh, Adam Manis had to make a good save so Shamrock Rovers really seemed to be under the cost for just over a half an hour to go but um, yeah hopefully that's a sign of good things to come um, going forward with Festi obviously and just actually encouraging news to bring, bring you from an Irish perspective and teams in Europe tonight I'm sure Paul Neil and, and in yourself would be delighted to hear this Shelburne ladies are true they won 1-0 in Sevilla tonight uh, so they're into the next round of Champions League qualifiers don't ask me to pronounce the name of the team they were playing but Hedo O'Reilly uh, well, talk about making an, in, a good instant impact certainly on the European stage she got the only goal there massive massive coup for getting her not just for Shelburne I suppose the league in general but um, yeah so um, hopefully that's a league that we'll be bringing a lot more from um, Syria this season of course as you're probably going to touch on now we also have news to bring you from Syria B yes definitely Aaron Connolly's debut for Venezia the real the real um how would we put it, Venezia? The real real marketing team, shall we say. Uh, lovely, lovely jerseys. And uh, apparently they only use their TikTok for marketing as well. They don't even post about the matches a lot of the time. But he came on for two minutes and out of time as they were beaten with fellow relegation side Genoa 2-1 there. Probably more game time for him in the coming weeks. He's probably not 100% fit because he did join quite late in the transfer window. Uh, 
Liam Kerrigan didn't play for Como. He was on the bench as they drew 1-1 with Cagliari. They were the other team relegated from Serie A last season. Uh, Zach Elbazetti, two bits of information on him here. He helped AIK to the playoff round of the Conference League after uh, he played 105 minutes. I think he might have gone off injured, actually. And they did win on penalties against FC Schnedeke. That's how Gary Spain said it last week, so I'm going to go with it. That's and, right. Uh, There's no yes, question. It, it must be right. And then he didn't feature on Saturday in their 2-2 draw with Varnamo as a... Uh, Right, he must have got injured. They've drawn Slovakko in the next round, so that's obviously a Slovakian team, I assume. So, look, they'll be looking they're to get through. A, a Czech Republic team, and I can actually tell Czech you they Republic. are 1-0 down at half-time in that one. That's the way leg has been played in Czech Republic tonight, and Zach is on the bench for that game. So, 1-0 Brand down to Ace Delkmar. But they've, um, I wouldn't write them off just yet, obviously, because it's only a quarter way through the tie, but just from briefly following their journey in Europe this season, they've come from behind in quite a lot of ties. So, um, obviously, it'd be brilliant as well. We talk about, obviously, Irish interest in Chamber Rovers being in the Conference League group stages. If they can get through, it'd be great to see as well uh, another um, player representing the green, white and gold, or green, white and orange on the European stage on Thursday night over the coming weeks. 100%. Um, what was I was going to say something there. And uh, their rivals, Dior Garden as well, their fellow... Um, fellow rivals there they won 3-0 the other night so the Swedish that, could, yeah. have, uh, three, could have a load of competitors in Europe this year which would be great Fish, to see uh, Jack Burns former employers Apoel Nicosia the yeah. team who have been struggling the last couple of years considering their Champions League quarterfinals not too long ago um, we now go to the the ultimate footballing experience the MLS and soccer it's a soccer week, experience this week we have a goal to report a goal from flying left wing back in, John in, Gallagher in the league in general yeah yep yep okay, well there's actually tons of goals in this league I gotta be honest with you John Gallagher grabbed a goal in another win for Austin FC remember talking about them last year we've spoken about it already struggled last year right up at the top of the league this year they beat Sporting Kansas City 4-3 and John grabbing a goal from his new position of left wing back and uh, Shane O'Neill was on the so was Toronto beat the Portland Timbers. I think that was also 4-3 as well. So there's 14 goals in two games if you're interested. Um, John grabs a goal from flying left wing back, whatever they want to call them over there. Who knows? Yeah, sorry. Just first, I just instantly got flashbacks there when you mentioned we have a goal to report uh, in MLS this week. I just got flashbacks to that Apre match sketch of BBC Northern Ireland from 2006 World Cup. For every game in the Northern Ireland Premiership that day seemed to finish nil all. But anyway, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, great to see. Like we touched on it there in the show a fortnight ago. Like what a contrast in seasons it's been for um, for Austin FC. Like Roos at the bottom of whichever conference they are. It really shows my lack of American geography that I don't know which one they are. But anyway, and they're up there flying this flag this season, going really, really strong. Just of course, the interesting thing I am going to be curious about with the MLS this season because normally the regular season finishes up in November. And then they do the playoffs, but obviously with the World Cup coming up, um, it's going to be interesting. Is the season going to be completely finished before then, or are they going to stretch it into next after the World Cup? Because that would have a neck on, neck, knock on effect, even sorry for next season. But I'm sure as the weeks fly by, that'll be something um, that we'll uh, keep an eye on and come across. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have to anyway, especially if John is involved and some of the others as well, because um, eight teams qualify for the end of season playoffs in both conferences. From each conference. Yes, yes, from each conference, which is just fantastic. You know, you finish eighth and you still get an end of season. You still could be rewarded for your for success, like for media mediocrity. But anyway, it's like it's like giving a uh, medals of participation. Anyway, we won't go into that. Um, sorry, I'm, I know I'm being harsh, but one of the pet hates in my life. Anyway, oh, um, oh. sorry, just, oh. I thought for a second it looked like fair and partial destined to score. But I think your man scuffed a the chance there from. Okay, anyway, I think we'll wrap it up here, Jer, because I unfortunately have to run to... Tr- well, not unfortunately, I'm looking forward to it. I have to go to training. But uh, look, thanks very much, guys. Thank you, Jer. Great show as usual. And uh, we will talk again next week. Thanks very much. Cheers, Paul. Take care, everyone out there. Thanks for viewing and watching. And apologies to any Rovers fans. <laughs>